What's up, everyone? Welcome back to Locked on Sharks, the premier hockey podcast covering your favorite team in the Bay. I'm back. The main character of the podcast is back. Wow, main character. <laughs> I'm wearing, I'm, I'm wearing, I'm wearing drug dealer shades right now while we do this. It's <laughs> awesome. Uh, if the audio quality isn't great, it's because I basically lost my voice. The Australians tried to kill me, but I'm back, stronger than ever. It not ideal. Uh, I wasn't. I was a little yesterday. worried. I heard a the podcast worried. yesterday. You were a little worried because JD messaged me at. Like nine o'clock, uh, like 11 30. And he yeah. said, Do you want to record at one or two today? Literally, I was in a different galaxy, forgot <laughs> that it was actually Halloween, and Halloween wasn't on Saturday. And messaged him at like 2 30, was like, I just woke up. And then he said, Do you want to do it at three? And I fell asleep again until 4 30, <laughs> and messaged him at five and said, I can do the podcast now. And he said, I've already done it. Yeah, that was my weekend. So, yeah, I went trick or treating with my kids. Yeah. Good times. Good times are ahead by all. Let's talk hockey. Your Locked On Sharks, your daily podcast on the San Jose Sharks. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Don't uh don't start a nine house eight house house crawl at noon and then go home at four a.m. Ugh. Not p.m. a.m. Ugh. the next day coming around. Uh, not ideal. This is no. part of my costume. The shades. It was awesome. <laughs> it was it was good. It was good. Uh, speaking of costumes, what costume are the Buffalo Sabers wearing? Because they are not this good. Their team sucks. <laughs> apparently. <laughs> no, apparently so, yeah. they're actually really good. So yeah. the Sabers are. Five, two, and one. Third in the Atlantic right now. Third in the Atlantic. Which is a good Toronto Maple Leafs. Yeah, a good Atlantic. Yeah. It's yeah. I think the biggest thing with Buffalo is that everybody thought coming into the season they were gonna be bottom feeders, especially with Jack Eichel's back Mm -hmm. uh going splody. And the Sabres and Eichel, people don't know, Sabres and Eichel are fighting over what surgery to have. He wants this like disc replacement surgery and they just want him to fuse his neck or his back and so my neck my back (laughs) um (laughs) this is a pg show just kidding it's not so they're fighting over what to do and he's obviously not there because he wants to do one thing and they want to do the other they've explored some trade options eventually it's going to come to a head and he's going to have to get traded but for now he's not there and so this ragtag group of players has somehow been getting it done don't ask me how i think it starts in net uh yeah. Craig Anderson is even older than JD and can confirm. <laughs> he's yes. he's got a 939 save percentage. I don't how. I don't and, know. And then man. Justin Tukarski of Team Canada Pierre Maguire Tukarski fame where Pierre Maguire unloads in his pants at the World Junior yeah. and it just ruins the call. He's got a 936. Dustin Tukarski didn't even have a 936 in midget hockey. I don't how. What is going on? I I have no idea. This team is I think the way they do is it just kind of grind you out defensively and then muster up enough offense. So they've scored, you know, 25 goals this season, but they've only given up 17, which is I think second or third best, you know, like in the league and their eight games that they played uh, for example, like the sharks who, um, you know, they've given up, they've scored 25 goals and they've given up 19. So they're, they're kind of in the same boat where this, this game feels like it's going to be a two to one type of affair where just both teams are just going to try to grind you out and then try to score some whenever they can. So, the, but yeah, it, the it's one been little crazy. dirty secret though is kind of Buffalo schedule has been pretty easy. Yeah. So they beat up on Montreal five, one in the opener. Montreal's never good. They beat in a shootout, the coyotes two one. the coyotes don't even have a win yet. They beat Vancouver 5-2. Vancouver's not very good. You've, they you've... lost to the Bruins. For... I saw them in person. Yes. And I'm going next week to see them play the Ducks, and I have to cheer for the Canucks, which is brutal because it's lesser of two evil situations. It's a catch-22 there. Real it's real. Yeah. So they beat the Canucks 5-2. Are very good. Then they lost to the Bruins 4-1, which, I mean, they should. Yeah. Then they lost in overtime to the Devils, who are, who are kind of frisky. Then they yeah. beat the Lightning 5-1. I think that's the real surprise here. And then they beat the Ducks in overtime, and then they beat the or they lost to the Kings. The Kings. So they haven't really played, other than Boston and Tampa, they haven't played a top flight team. 
Uh, but you could say the same thing with the sharks too. So yeah, yeah. But we're not talking about our dirty secrets. (laughs) We know our dirty (laughs) secrets. We're priming. We're priming the people for Buffalo. Yeah. The sharks also play like ass against Buffalo and have for the history of my life. I don't know. Yes. I don't know what it is, but they just aren't very good against Buffalo. Well, I mean, the thing is, like, the Canadians, you know, they hadn't won in, in San Jose years. since yeah, since I was in high school. And that streak is not broken. Maybe this is an omen for the the Sharks to finally get a win against the Sabres. It's, it's kind of, yeah, a much my needed en- win. My enduring memory uh, is that picture where there's, like, four Sabres in a line and the one Sharks guy in the corner trying to pass it out, and there's, like, three Sharks in front of the net just standing there by themselves. It's yeah. my enduring Sabres, uh, Sabres um, Sharks memory. But I guess it doesn't really matter what goalie they get, bringing it back to the ice, because both goalies have been on fire. But I think in years past, we would have been like, oh, I don't know how they're going to score the last mm-hmm. couple years. Is Timo Meyer just going to light these guys on fire? Because that would be very convenient. <laughs> that would be very convenient um, for for the Sharks, just especially with you know with all the uncertainty in the roster right now. Especially Kevin LeBanc got moved to the COVID list today. Um, it looks like they'll they'll get back. Uh, Cagliano was back on the ice for practice on Monday, and then. Um, you know, it sounds like Darlene, well, Darlene should... is going to be back and Couture is back. He would didn't have Couture. COVID. Yep. He was yeah, just he back, had diarrhea so, or something. Uh, he had COVID related symptoms, but didn't have COVID. So they wanted to just keep him diarrhea. out to be safe. So, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it, it's going to be, you know, so, I mean, the defense is still going to be Brent Burns with a bunch of children. Um, Hell yeah. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it, it's going to be the next oldest defenseman on that th- Ferraro. Well, I guess, uh, I guess Magna is like Magna, or yeah. something like that. Yeah, Magna's like 28, but uh, he, he's, other than he's that, Merkley's personal valet at this point. <laughs> I think so, yes. Um, but yeah, other than that, then yeah, it would be Ferraro at 23, probably, or you know, because I'm Melosha isn't very old, Merkley's 21, uh, Hadika's 23 or 20, right? So yeah, it's just a bunch of children and Brent Burns running around. So I haven't, I haven't, I haven't, I haven't talked enough. Santeria Hitaka rules, yes. Why do we have to pretend like we don't want to hurt Vlasic and Shimek's feelings for people listening to the podcast? I took my sunglasses off. He made it want to make a very good point here. Yes. What are we doing? The Sharks got off to a really good start. Obviously, they're four mm-hmm. and zero. They've battled back. They're what six and three now? Uh, five and three. So. Five and three. I was counting the win tomorrow. They're mm-hmm. five and three. They're clearly in the thick of, of doing something. They're progressing forward with a young team. The culture seems to have changed. They're trying to convince Tomas Hurdle to stay. Why do we have to pretend like Santeri Hataka can't be on this team? Uh, he looks like an he looks like he should be an everyday on. player. Yeah, um, he he needs to be playing. I said that on in, uh, Monday's episode where he needs to be an everyday player. I don't care if you have to scratch Shimmick or Vlasic or both, or I don't care. Like he needs to be on this team. <laughs> both. He can just play both spots. <laughs> He'll play both spots. It doesn't. But no, you're right. Brent Burns is going to play thirty minutes anyway. He can just double shift. So, but yeah. Um, no, you're right. You're totally right. We, you have to, if, if Doug Wilson in the summertime comes out and says that it's only a reset and Couture is talking about making the playoffs and all the players are here and Tomas mm-hmm. Hurdle's only staying if they're making the playoffs and Eric Carlson has come back to life and all this good stuff is going on. Why are we not putting the best players out there? It, it At this point, if you're trying to make the playoffs, you just have to scratch some of those guys that you listed off. You just have to. It, we're at that point. Yep. Middleton, you're safe somehow. Didn't expect that. <laughs> So, but you were cromulent. It would be better if Middleton could play on the third pair and yeah. Kenyjov could show. Well, I mean, we I guess I talk is right handed, right? Uh, he's he uh, lefty. No, he's lefty. so there you go. Hataka Carlson, yeah, or even Kenyjov, Kenyjov well, Carlson, and then yeah, uh, when Hataka gets back, but um, though, yeah, if if it's kind of crazy that the coaches aren't seeing what we're seeing, so but if you want to see TV in a new way. You guys should check out Direct TV Stream. Does this sound familiar to you? You've got one device that lets you catch the game live, another lets you stream your favorite shows. You watch sports highlights on your phone, you've got your neighbor's best friends log in for the good stuff. Well, I want to tell you about a simple way to get your entertainment you love without the hassle. And it's a great way to finally get your TV together. It's called Direct TV Stream. It brings your live TV and on demand favorites together like never before. So you can watch your favorite sports, movies, and shows all in one place. It means no more juggling remotes, no need to buy another device ever again, and the best part, there's no annual contract. So get rid of the clutter and the confusion and get your TV together with DirecTV Stream. You can learn more at directtv.com. That's directtv.com. Compatible devices required. 
Content varies by package. <laughs> package. God damn you, you, cut, you cut my package joke out last time. You can't you can't keep cutting my package jokes out. I refuse. <laughs> Speaking of package. I don't know how to, I don't know. Robert Hag is tall. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. The defensive pairings for the Sabres. Rasmus Dahlin, who's a baller. Will Butcher, mm-hmm. uh, Jacob Bryson, Colin Miller, Robert Hag, Mark Pissick. Pissick? Pissick? <laughs> I, I don't know. Uh, last time we saw them, Henry Joka Harju, or according to Daily Faceoff, Henry uh, Joka Harju is out, uh, but he would normally slot in for one of these guys. Not, not a scary defense. No. I don't really like Robert Hag is big and slow. Mark Pizik's whatever. Um, Darlene Butcher's a good pair. Like that, that's a that's a top shelf pair right there. Um, yeah. And Jacob Bryson, Colin Miller, Miller can eat minutes and stuff like that. Um, but if Timo and Darlene and Contour are back together, and we have that line working, and some of the other lines keep stepping up as they get healthy and stuff like that, and if William Eklund could find somebody that could actually finish a shot for him, <laughs> God, Tomas Hurdle. If they if they send if they send William Eklund back because he doesn't have points or whatever. I would just like to broadcast Nick Benino being just like, what do I do there, with like, my hands? Yeah. Yeah. Like, he does so many good things. You can tell that it wasn't on the podcast yesterday because there's so many thoughts. Yes. I'm not really scared of that defense. Um, when you go to the forwards, the $9 million man, Jeff Skinner, uh, they're, top, they're 1C because I close out as Dylan Cousins. You'll notice the centers get worse. Dylan <laughs> Cousins, who's in his second year. Uh, Vinny Hinestroza. Actually, all the lines just get worse. It's Buffalo. Uh, Rasmus Asplund, Tage Thompson, Victor Olofsson, then Drake Kajula, Zemgis Jurgensen, Kyle Akpozo, Anders Bjork, Artu Rootsalainen, and John Hayden. Never heard of that person. Uh, Cody Eakin is day-to-day, so he could be back. And Casey Middlestat is out. Uh, but he may be back. Honestly, when you look at this lineup, how are they doing this? <laughs> <laughs> like Magnets, how do they work? <laughs> Uh, like there, Victor Olsen's leading the team in points. He's got five goals and four assists. Victor Golson's uh, back. Yeah. Rasmus Asplund's got six points. Like who's I Rasmus Asplund? Yeah. He's a 24-year-old four. He's got four goals and two assists this year. Like I think the thing right now is that eventually the lack of top end, yeah, the lack of top end talent is is gonna is gonna hurt them. Um, there's a lot of bottom six, middle six guys here. Dylan Cousins only in his second year. He's going to be first line to caliber player. Jeff Skinner's on the wrong side of 30. Rasmus Absalon is like a 24. Victor Olofsson really only plays scores goals. So he's Victor Golofsson. So like there's not a lot to work with here. So it's going to catch up to them. But are is it going to catch up to them tomorrow or tonight when you're listening to this for the Sharks? I just don't know if the good vibes keep rolling for Buffalo or not. And it's, it's, it's tough. Do you have, do you have some metrics for us? Uh, no, I was just going to pull up. Cause since the sharks lines are so day to day, I don't like want to cry. Of, yeah. You can't really forecast the sharks lines. Cause we don't know. Well, here's, here's what they were at practice on Monday. So Couture with Leonard and Meyer, but you assume that <laughs> Dolly going to slide in for, for Leonard, the rise of John Leonard out of the ashes, like a oh, Phoenix. We should start calling him the good. Phoenix. <laughs> He should play. He needs to play over Nieto. Like he's yes, or Lane better. Peterson, or or any yeah. But um, guys. Um, hurdle with Bear Ban off and Eklund. Like okay, I asked for that on Monday and I received. So Bear Banov looked great on Saturday's game, and I want to see him uh, with that hurdle line. I, I think we might have a something there. So the top Benito, line was Leonard Kitchener Meyer. Yep. Okay. Uh, Benino with Cagliano and Balsers. Okay. And then uh, Lord Jasper with uh, Pedersen, Gadovich, and Nick Merkley. So whoever's available there. I, I think Nick- so. If if it, we're assuming uh, Darlene is back, uh, mm-hmm. because all signs are pointing to him coming back, I think he'll slot in to the Couture-Meyer line. And then our boy JL goes to Cogliano's spot on the third line, and then Cogliano takes his usual spot back on the fourth line, so there's more chemistry there with like how they've started the season. Does that make sense? Or will John Leonard get booted off the team, or is John Leonard going to play in the fourth line? It was Where in the world me, is John Leonard? It would seem to me with the way the lines are set up that John Leonard would get booted off because like, like if you were going to have John Leonard right play third line, wouldn't you want to have him practice with Benino and like 
Balsers or Cagliano, especially for since he hasn't played at all this year, really, except for getting thrown in. So it seems to me like John Leonard is going to get the scratch, if I had to guess, just based on him being based, a placeholder. So, yeah, I think I, it's so hard to predict, especially with the COVID yeah. stuff, because like tomorrow, Eric Carlson could just be back. We don't, uh, we don't know. Um, the Sharks, or there's, tour, yeah, I guess, some players, some, some players are symptomatic. We don't know who. Well, we know that it's not Darlene. We know that it's not uh, yeah. Cogliano. We know it's not. Who's the other person? Uh, Nieto is back. Uh, Nieto be back. Yeah. So it's so. got to be one of the defenders, I guess. And also, um, I mean, this is just a speculating too. But Carlson and Middleton missed practice on Friday before the game on Saturday, and there was no reason, rhyme or reason. So, just putting the pieces together here, it seems like uh, that that's where this started with. So. Yeah. We, we don't know though. Um, yeah. I'm not going to say that one person has COVID or not. Uh, Bob Bugner also has COVID. Yes. Uh, so can get better for all of them, I guess. I don't, I don't know. Yes. Uh, so we don't really, the problem is, is that we don't know how the lines are going to shake up tomorrow. So if San Jose ice is the D plus squad again, it's going to be tough sailing. Even though they beat Winnipeg, it's not like that was like an amazing game by them. Yeah. And Buffalo's frisky and has been a little bit better than Winnipeg to start the season. So there's definite reason to believe that Buffalo could walk in there and walk out with like a 4-1 win or something like that. And we don't know who's starting in net. No, um, I would assume probably Hill because Reimer started on Saturday and I think they want to maybe try to get Hill back on a, you know, kind of... Reimer's? Reimer's been really good. He's been very, Did you see what's his face's uh, Instagram story? Who was uh, that? Oh, uh, Jasper Weatherby. Yes. Yeah, he put the crown on Reimer and said King yes. Reimer. King Reimer. Uh, Reimer's exactly what they wanted. Yep. He comes in when Hill's not playing well, settles everybody down, wins some games. Sausage Jaddy. Yes. Man, that goaltending style. Can't get used to it. <laughs> no. but so, I mean, I'll get used to it. Please don't give me back Martin Jones. Uh, no. Also, I saw Martin Jones in person. I sat fifth row behind the net. Literally the whole time. Was sitting there watching him. Uh, and a bunch <laughs> of the Canucks fans the were side. yelling. Uh, yes. Let one in for your hometown. Uh, and then I forgot <laughs> until I got there and sat in my seats and Justin Braun skated by. And oh. I got a little hard. It was oh. nice. I was like, oh, my love. I forgot about you. And then he got wallpapered right in front of us. And I saw the pain, like mm. piece of his soul leave his body. Uh, it was really funny. But anyway. It's Kyle, if this game feels like a very low scoring game to me, what do you think? I think there's high potential. Do you think I could bet on that? I think there is one place you can bet on that for sure. Is it betonline.ag? It is betonline.ag. And you know why? Why? Because they're back and they're better than ever. There's a new web interface for the start of basketball and hockey season with more props, more odds, and more lines than ever before. BetOnline remains your number one spot for all the basketball and football and hockey action this season. Baseball's also wrapping up. Don't bet on baseball. Or you can. There's one game left. Or two couple or two yeah i don't know not a big baseball guy go braves i don't know head to the new updated desktop or mobile website to sign up today and receive your 50 percent welcome bonus on your first deposit just use the promo code locked on it's right there to receive your bonus from basketball football baseball playoffs hockey the sweet science ufc aussie rules football your favorite vegas casino game don't wait to take advantage of all the amazing offers available for the 2021 season Bet online is the fastest and easiest way to bet all your favorite sports. Bet online, where the game starts. Where do you think this game is going to end, though? Like score wise, or like no, what? like what planet? Of course, score wise. What do you I mean? Like, what do you? What do you <laughs> mean? <laughs> San Jose. It's probably it will end to move in the Santa game. Clara County at approximately yeah. uh, nine forty-five p.m. So, no, what do you uh, think? Uh, what do you think? What do you think? What do you, how do you think this game is going to go? Like we've talked about how Buffalo is in the in the right vibe to start the season. And they have, obviously, they're working towards something. We don't know how, mm-hmm. but they're working towards something. And the goaltending has been uh, outstanding. And San Jose has got all this COVID issues and, and it has come back to earth a little bit. So I don't know. I don't know where your thoughts are. Do you think San Jose is going to have a tough time, easy time? Or is it going to be more like the Winnipeg game? Is it going to be more like the first Habs game? I think it's going to be like uh, kind of a repeat of the Jets game. So I think, especially with all of these you know, infusion on the back end of the young guys. Um, I can see Brent Burns playing, just eating up a ton of minutes again, especially coming off two days rest here uh, or a couple days. Yeah. Two days rest here. Um, and then he doesn't need rest. 
He doesn't need red. That man he just needs machine. he just needs 16 ounces of raw flank steak <laughs> into his gut. Yeah. So he just eats it like a duck. Just <laughs> 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 he's not even chewing. He's like eating like a pig. It's actually more like a duck. Duck. Yeah. Um, <laughs> deep cut. But uh, yeah, I think this is going to be one of those kind of games uh, where it's just it's going to be like a really low score. And I can picture like a two to one type of game where, you know, maybe the Sharks are able to squeak out a couple goals. Um, I don't buy Buffalo's offense at all, but I do buy. Their I, goal I don't team. buy their goalies, I, but they're on I, fire. So they're on fire right now. And sometimes you got to you got to roll with that. A, a hot goalie. We've like seen the gift of the gift of the man on fire walking through yeah. the night. But so, the, the Buffalo's Buffalo start to the season is the Elmo flaming Elmo gift. This is the like this. I mean Elmo right now. <laughs> yes. So, um, you know, but I mean, Buffalo is, like you said, they've been on a, a bit of a road trip here. So you could see maybe they start to kind of lose their legs and stuff like that. So we saw um, that happen with the Sharks. We Hopefully saw that happen with the Sharks. The how, many, how many games have they been on the road trip here? Um, that's a good question. They've been on. You think we'd be, you think we'd be prepared? Uh, uh, this is their third game. Yeah, third game, and then they head back. Or no, they go to Seattle next. They go the to Seattle, so um, so they've been on the road since the twenty eighth. So not the longest time. That's Thursday, but still yeah. three games in five days um, on the road. It's yep. ne- never a good time. So it's a good point. The sea legs could start be uh, could start yeah. showing up here. So I think it'll. It's important for the Sharks to continue to come out uh, strongly. Um, you know. The that was a big thing on the road trip for them was they kept getting down by a goal or a couple of goals and they're having to try to battle back. So I think if they come out and they try to maybe get an early goal, like a you know in the first five minutes, uh, especially if you know Darlene and Timo, if that line can get going, um, I then I think the the Sharks can should be able to win this game. But um, like I guess you just said, I'm worried just that we saw it with you know jake allen last week where they just he literally just steals a game you know that was the most shots uh saved against in the sharks in a loss uh since ben scriven saved like 59 or whatever the hell that was yeah yeah so yeah it's you could see that you know the sharks putting up you know 35 shots and you know getting one goal because the you know whoever's starting for the for the sabers just goes bananas so what's your official call i'm gonna go two one sharks Okay, I'm gonna say I'm gonna say three one, and I'm gonna say William Eklund has two points. Ooh, did we get the first? Somebody's goal? got somebody's got to finish. Yeah, somebody's got to finish. Yeah, why uh, can't eventually. it be Eklund? Oh, he oh man! I mean, if he, he can scored, finish. If he had scored on that that little breakaway against Montreal, oh my god, this podcast the podcast goes. will cease to exist. <laughs> yes. It just will combust into little pieces. Yeah. Uh, imagine, imagine a Carl a Carlson to Eklund to Darlene goal. Uh, Carlson's not playing though, but yeah, that'd be great though. You can imagine it I in the next games. It, yeah. He's not dead. <laughs> Sometime later this year, his yes. dick was repaired successfully <laughs> with rubber bands and cement. He made a child with it. <laughs> we we it, forensic science the timeline. Yes, he either heard it and made a child, or heard it making the child. <laughs> but the I timeline works. I think it's the latter. <laughs> I hope it's the latter. That's awesome. <laughs> that's, that's a better a, story. That's a great origin story. Yes. I think the Sharks win. I think I think I think the Eklund Dam is it's getting ready to burst, buddy. Getting ready to burst. Um, and I really I really hope I'm loving what I'm seeing out of Timo Meyer start the season. So I'm really hoping that Timo just keeps it keeps it banging. I hope there's no ill effects for Darlene because obviously he got off to that super hot start. Mm-hmm. Um, Aiden Hill kind of worries me a bit if he's in. He just hasn't been. He hasn't been as sharp as, as Reimer. So. Exactly. And, and and he's still young and he hasn't played a ton of games. And James Reimer has done this a lot. So mm-hmm. um, it's great that they have Reimer to do that. But I think I think the Sharks. After the win against Winnipeg, this is a gutty, scrappy Jets team. This is the or uh, ooh, wow, this is a gutty, scrappy Sharks team. This is the, scu- the scuttiest. Oh my god, I need to, I need to go to bed. This is the guttiest, <laughs> scrappiest baby, Sharks yeah. team we've seen in a long time. It's what lovable. Did you just say to me, I was like, you need to go to bed. It's seven thirty, <laughs> buddy. I don't. Where are we? Mars? Uh, <laughs> don't do drugs, kids. Uh, or do a lot of them. Whatever. I'm not your dad. Yeah, I'm just, I love the way that they play and compete and stuff. So there's no game where I go into it. Maybe it's like Colorado or something like that. I'll be like, well, if they lose by like five, nothing, who gives a shit? But mm. there's really, I, I'm really not worried about a Buffalo team out, out scrapping them. Uh, they're they're going to battle. They're going to, they're going to fight. And we even saw it against Boston. So Sharks win three, one. I think Eklund is the player of the game. Yeah, it's my call. I think Merkley also gets on the board too. 
Oh, I forgot that Merkley's in. Yes. <laughs> so excited. Yeah. Don't forget, uh, tonight's game, it's on ESPN Plus. So you got to make sure you're all logged into your Xbox or however you're watching it before. Or if you live in Canada, so. yar, matey. Yar, mateys. It goes. So, yes. But if you would like to let us know about anything, we don't care. <laughs> if you'd like to see JD's memes that he puts up on the main, Lockdown Sharks on Twitter. Uh, you can find us there. JD's been JD's got good memeage recently. Mm-hmm. Really, he's, he's, he's been good. I'm like Timo yeah. Meyer this year with it. <laughs> so really taking it to another level. It really. I I knew you were. I knew you. Were, I knew you were feeling yourself. You're really in your bag when you put the creation of man up, like in the in the uh, preseason. Preseason, yeah. 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 Like the first game of the preseason. I, that's when I knew you were in your bag for the season. Uh, mm-hmm. If you would like to follow us on any of the socials, Facebook, Instagram, JD puts up all of our stuff there, or most of it. Definitely in all the episodes. If you'd like to get at us, locked on sharks. If you would like to subscribe on YouTube, if you're watching this, if you came over thinking about how to riot, welcome to Hockey YouTube. Yeah, if, once we get to 500 subscribers, we're at 340 right now. I will recreate the jumbo slide in my living room with my children. So, yes, please subscribe. I want to see you get rug burn on your ass for that. <laughs> oh, we have like hardwood floor. So oh, perfect. Like, there we go. So yes. get those 500. We'll do. He'll do the jumbo slide. <laughs> yes. Email? I haven't really checked it in a while. I've been kind of a loose unit this last couple of weeks. So uh, we'll, we'll check it tonight. Lockdownsharks at gmail.com. If you have an email on us, thank you for your service. Uh, JD has been holding it down at my fry hole. Kyle. Is that Kyle Demetrius? And thank you for making us your first listen. Go listen to the Fantasy Hockey Podcast or Locked On NHL or some other good podcast. There's a lot of them. And then there's ours. The best one. The best one. (laughs) Bye, friends.